different system of uh, our current uh, podcast. You know, you usually we we used to to do a commentary se session with uh, our commentator Andrea Perdigão, but unfortunately uh, this week he it was not possible to have him in our in our show. So uh, today uh, we are doing a vlog system, so we can uh, speak a little bit about this club. Uh, this club, the best club in the world for me, of course, Newcastle United. Because today, uh, I'm going to to talk uh, during the next few minutes on this vlog about uh, our club, Newcastle United Football Club, and the takeover. And why did I decide today to speak about the takeover? Very simple, because it's annoying me very, very much. Uh, this situation of some people, some uh, clubs in England, some uh, companies, some bigger higher forces, let's say they, uh, this way higher forces, are trying to break down the, the Newcastle United takeover. And I know what, uh, every Newcastle fan knows why is that. Every Newcastle fan knows why is that. It's because they are afraid. The other clubs are afraid. Are afraid because we know then when the, the prince of Saudi Arabia takes control, even is not taking, taking direct control of the club, is with other company for, with Amanda Stavely. But we all know that when he takes control of our club, we will probably be one of the best clubs in the world, if, is, if not the best club in the world in terms of uh, football playing, in terms of uh, financial, financial strength, in terms of uh, competitions fighting, uh, fighting for titles uh, more often, if not every year, every single year, uh, title after title after title. I know that we are just this close to become the wealthiest club in the world. Everything thanks to the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. But there is one thing that we need to people need to understand. Look, I understand that uh, there is a lot of controversy, a lot of situations about uh, the prince of Saudi Arabia. Everybody knows what's going on, or most of you know what's going on, because if you see the news, you see what's going on, the situation with Yemen, and now even Qatar, Qatar just remind, just uh, remind themselves of, come to, to say some, some stuff out, and we cannot forget that Qatar, the world, uh, the Qatari World Cup, has been said that it might be financed, uh, it might be uh, receiving financial help from the Saudis to make the, the, this World Cup, of, uh, now the World Cup is going to be in 2022 in Qatar. So, but now they, they, re, they remind themselves of uh, talking about human rights. Look, and we know things, uh, what things are going on, but one thing, you have to understand one thing, just one thing. One thing is politics. The other thing is business. Look, we've been for 14, 15 years with the owner. I, I don't remember uh, very well, but 14, 15 years around that with an owner that he is just a deep shit. He is just a, a, an idiot. Look, and this is the truth. He doesn't do anything good for our, our club. It does nothing good for our, for our club. Everything is just about interest. Everything is just about uh, negotiation, uh, about uh, bad financial decisions. With him, we, are, we already got relegated twice. And we reached a semi uh, quarter final of the Europa League. If I'm not mistaken, 
quarterfinal, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm mistaken, guys, just uh, write here in, in, in the commentary section because I, I right now I, I, I think it was quarterfinal. What else? We don't fight for cups. We don't fight for the for the Premier League. We don't fight for nothing. You know, the, the last thing that we fought was in the championship in 2017. Was the, only, the last time that we fought for something? So please, look, guys. Everybody that is against Newcastle and look, we are good. We are very good fans. We have a great club, and uh, we have a great city. For us, I don't live in Newcastle, but I know Newcastle very, very well. I know our stay is uh, St James's. Look. Uh, um, we have great people there. We have great fans. We are fans that we are around the world. A lot, a lot of fans. We have one of the great. We have a great history in football. We have a great history in England. Look, what is your problem? And I have to say, look, you guys from Man City and uh, Man U and Sheffield that also has. Uh, a Saudi owner, if I'm not mistaken. What's your problem? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid that Big Shark is coming up to to uh, hunt you? Is that is is that your fear? You're afraid of that. You're afraid that we want the best for our club. We want our club to rise again from the ashes, to grow up. And grow stronger, and uh, have the opportunity to bring some of the their greatest legends to work back in the club, like for for instance Keegan, like Kevin Keegan, the possibility to bring such a legend, possibility to bring a man that knows so much about football, and can help the club reach further. Look, so what's your problem? I have the possibility, who you know, to bring Shear, uh, Shear back, Alan Shearer. Look, we want that. I would love to see Shear back. I would love to see Keegan back to help the club reach new rounds, higher rounds. So, what are your problems, guys? Are you afraid? Are what now? City now are, is afraid. Uh, what? Menu is afraid. Chelsea is afraid. Arsenal is afraid. Look. What's your problem? Look, we cannot forget that in 2004, if I'm not mistaken, 2005, no, 4, 4, it was 2004. Abramovich reached just in 2003, if I'm not mistaken, in 2004. We cannot forget that in 2004, uh, Abramovich, when he hired Mourinho, he spent about 500 million pounds. Around 500 million pounds, if I'm not mistaken. 450, 500 million pounds. And at that time, I didn't see many people uh, jeopardizing uh, the, the man. I saw everybody say, oh, because he brings the big money and he's going to change, change the club, he's going to change the system and the football system. But I didn't see many people reach to the point and, oh, uh, we're going to forget the kind of business he, he has. And uh, the environmental pollution that that creates the, the business that he has with the, the 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 gas and things like that. Look, I didn't see. Uh, I saw some people. I didn't see so many people talk about that as we are seeing now, with the possibility with possibility that it's almost sure that we are going to have the crown prince of Saudi Arabia as our new owner, as the, our new president in Newcastle United. So, guys, look, to the other clubs and to all the, the human rights uh, companies or the non-profits or non-governmental -gov organizations, whatever you are, look, I understand and I respect what you do. I really do. But understand one thing, one thing is what happened 
in the countries around the world that uh, Saudi Arabia can be involved and all those situations. The other thing is business, okay? And they want to invest in our club in, the, in a way that they can reach England and they can reach other parts of Europe. They can invest in other parts of Europe. They have a big fund to invest here in, the, in Western countries. Saudi Arabia has a big fund. And they decide to invest on our club so they can reach also uh, other markets and can invest in other markets. So, okay, that's all right. And I understand that. But look, I'm not feeling sad. I'm not feeling annoyed for the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia decide to come to invest in our club. I'm not annoyed. You know what? Because for many, many years, me as so many other fans, but look, for me as a fan that lives abroad and rarely has the possibility to go to the cathedral to see the match, to St. James's, look, it's very sad, it's very complicated. Sometimes I want to see the, the matches on TV and I don't see them. You know why? Because Newcastle, in this part of Europe, is not a big club as it is Ch as the, the London clubs, as Chelsea, as Arsenal, and so on. And Arsenal used to be a great club. One day it was. One day it was a great club. In 03, 04, yeah, and in those times they, they were a big club. Not anymore. Everybody see what Arsenal does. But even though Arsenal have for instance, here in, in, in Portugal, Arsenal can have have more matches shown on TV than Newcastle has. And Newcastle has a much greater history than, uh, than Arsenal. That's the reality. Sorry, but that's the reality. And we are seeing, you know, sometimes I, 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 you have no idea the effort I have to do to be able to see my club's matches. Sometimes it's very tough. And one thing I know with this, with this takeover, I'll be able to see on the TV, on sports, on the sports TV, I'll be able to see more matches. Because look, for a, a fan that is abroad, that doesn't have the possibility to go so often to the cathedral to see the matches, this, for me, guys, it's great. It's not great. It's fantastic. It's just fantastic. Be able to look at TV, even if I don't see the match live, at the right time at 3 p.m. or at midday or whatever. If I just can see the match at night, one thing is for sure. I can record the match. I can reach the end of the day, uh, Labor Day, my Labor Day, and I can go home and enjoy the match and know, and know that I have a club, I support a club, I pay for a club that fights for something. That fights for something. And another thing, and these are really, I, I really hope that this happened. Look, for instance, I have my merchandise here at home. I don't have everything. I don't have the scarf here. I have the scarf in another place. And the hat and all that is in the, and the coat is in the, in the other room. I just have here in my room my, my flag. And I'm here with, with the shirt. But there is one thing that's for sure. Look, it's not understandable that we, we have one of the most expensive merchandises in all England, in all the Premier League clubs. We have one of the most expensive merchandise, uh, merchandise stores. And uh, it's complicated because for people that live in economies like I live, sometimes I would like to buy some merchandise direct, direct from the club store. And I don't buy because I don't want to give money to that bastard. Because I don't want to give money to a guy that doesn't respect our club. That doesn't even care about our club. That's the reality. But not, not try to get much further off the topic. Uh, far, far away from the topic. The idea, the situation is about the, 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 the takeover. One thing is for sure. It's almost done. And uh, even the championship is stopped because of all this coronavirus situation, everybody is locked down, is in lockdown and all that. 
I must admit, it, it couldn't come in better time. It couldn't come in better time. And I must admit, I'm happy. I'm from one from one side. I'm very happy because at least we have the opportunity to see our club to change hands and have someone that really wants to invest, that really wants to take our club further. And one thing, and I'm almost sure, not 100% sure, but I'm very, well, let, let's say closely sure that all Newcastle United fans agrees on this. It's with this investment, with this takeover, our club will reach further and people will have more will. It doesn't matter if it's just people from Newcastle or people around the world, the world, but we will do everything. So every time, it doesn't matter if you have more money, less money, that's not the matter here. The matter here is we will do everything to help our club and we'll be more times at the stadium. We'll buy more merchandise direct from the store and we'll do everything to see our club reach farther. That's what I think and that's what I hope to happen. So uh, I don't want to take this vlog much further. I just want to talk about one thing more and that's about the manager. Look, I know uh, this, is, uh, this is for Mr. Steve Bruce. I know that you've been doing what you can with the resources that the club gave to you. And uh, even knowing that, and I consider this weird, having so many injuries during a season, uh, like a ratio of like seven, eight, seven, eight injuries during most of the season. That's just strange, very strange. Look, I, I, I want, I want to, to, even though I want to applaud what Steve Bruce has been doing, uh, with the resources he has, but uh, uh, I want to. I, I know that probably Steve Bruce won't stay in the club for for the future. So I want to leave here a, a name, if you allow me. And uh, I just uh, because I've already heard about Pochettino or bring Benitez back. Look, I have a huge, a gr a gr huge and great feeling for Benitez for everything that he done and to take us for the title in the championship. Uh, st that stayed with us when we got relegated and took our our club uh, back to to the Premier League. But there is one thing uh, that that, that uh, I speak here about, and uh, for me, I think that it, it would be the best manager for a club that the team a club and the team that is starting over. I live here, Julian Nagelsmann. Julian Nagelsmann from, from Leverkusen, if I'm not mistaken. Guys, the, the kid is, what, 32, 33 years old? Around that. And even though he's been doing a great, great job on Leverkusen, even so. So uh, I, I truly believe that with the will and the... the, 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 the with the will and the... And the strength that he has to to reach further and to reach higher grounds, I truly believe that for a team that's starting over, no, forget Pochettino, forget uh, Rafael Benitez, forget any other manager. For me, the best one to start over would be Julian Nagelsmann. Of course, that's probably the, this won't make many many fans, but uh, look, think about that. Think about that, think about what uh, could be to have such a manager with such will. Because look, I see a lot of Julian Nagelsmann semi on, on Klopp with Liverpool. And we know that Klopp took a long time uh, to make Liverpool reach further. That's a reality, I know that. But, but, I truly believe that if we give to, to that man, if we give to that kid the right time for him to do the job that we need him to do, who knows, two years, three years tops, we'll start to see the results and the club to being champion in every single competition. That's my opinion, that's my thought, and I, I leave to you to, 
to say what you think would be the best for the club and your and your considerations. And guys, I'll, I'll finish from I'll finish here today's vlog. Don't you forget to subscribe in our in our social media. So we are with uh, NAC. We are on Facebook here in with just a matter of opinion. We are on YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter with uh, NEC with National Media Creations, guys. So subscribe if you if you like to, and uh, of course uh, leave your comments and your opinions. And as uh, as soon as it, it, it's possible, I will answer. Or in the next show, next Tuesday, I will, I will answer to all your questions, and uh, so we can have a more interactive. Uh, conversation, most interactive conversation as possible. So I hope, I hope you enjoyed to, today's uh, today's vlog. Today we we done the vlog season. And I hope to see you soon here on the next week on next Tuesday for another talking football talk. So I hope you're safe, stay safe, and see you soon. Cheers.